Hey guys, welcome back to Go Knuckle Talk with Flo. And I am Flo, and and there is my awesome co-host, uh, Lisa Nolan Hafner. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Michael. Here we are again. Nice yes. to see you again. It's it's we uh, it's been by the way three weeks. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And introduce our, our our lovely guests. We have a really special show tonight. Um, for those of you that spent most of your lives in Plainview. You probably went to see Dr. Siegler at one time or another, or maybe many times like me. And uh, he was very beloved in our community. And we are so, so honored tonight to have his wonderful, amazing daughters join us, Tracy and Brooks. Uh, Welcome to our show. Uh, We were talking before we started um, recording that Tracy's in Canada and Brooks is living in Rio de Janeiro, New Mexico. So welcome, ladies. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Hello, hello, ladies. So, uh, you know, before like, before we get to the questions, let me bring uh, Brooks. You probably you would definitely remember this. Ten years ago, I posted your dad's photo on mm-hmm. that Facebook page. Uh, remember in Plainview, Texas, when dot dot dot, and yes. there was. Oh yeah, I looked last night or to this morning. There was like four hundred forty nine comments. Yeah. On, on your dad and every yeah. one of them is positive how much this man meant not just to the community but to, to, to some personal lives mm-hmm. you remember that yes i do and yeah well how, how did that make you feel when you have that many people uh comment about your dad and then real quick there's over close to 817 likes so Maybe we'll get a thousand soon. But anyway, uh, how how that made you feel when you saw your photo of your dad? Oh, you know, dad has always been an exceptional man. And I've known that, you know, my whole life. So he was a good person and he was a doctor to help people. Well, cool. I mean, do you, you I remember any of the comments that were said? Oh, gosh. No, I, I don't remember any of the comments, but I know they were all nice. So a lot yeah. of people said that he delivered them. Um, yeah. So now, There's one comment that I that uh, Rosie Reels mentioned uh, mm-hmm. or posted that. And I remember this, that before he would give anyone a shot, he would kind of hide it by his crutch. <laughs> and I remember he did that. And he, yeah. I mean, he wouldn't have it out. He would have to decide. And then when it's time to give you a shot, he pulled it and boom. I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I remember that. I so, forgot about that. Huh? Yeah. I forgot about that. But what a great strategy for children who were terrified of needles, right? Even some uh, adults are terrified of needles. And some adults, too, I can imagine. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. Well, Ms. Lisa, why don't you start off with the questions? Yes, well, that is a really good segue to the question that I want to know is, was he your doctor as well, or did you all see somebody else? Like, if you got sick, did he treat you, or did you see somebody else in Plainview? He he definitely treated us, um, except in a dire emergency, which I probably had one of those, and it was where I just about (laughs) cut my ear off, Oh, literally. Literally, and uh, yeah, he did have somebody else sew me up. <laughs> how'd you how'd you almost cut your ear off? It's a long story. I was playing. Well, we hide- got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing hide and seek with um, our neighbor girl and uh, Jody Williams. It was Doctor Williams' daughter, and anyway, we were playing hide and seek and closing our eyes and. Anyway, uh, I was on my hands and knees beside my bed and she came over and and sat on me accidentally and my head went over and hit the wood slat and just sliced it. It was hanging by a piece of skin, literally. So it took 20 stitches to get my, but I got both my ears, so. We're good. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did you freak out? Were you in? Sh- did you go into shock? Or I was probably in shock. I remember I ran in uh, looking for mom because I, of course, had blood all over me, 
and I was trying to find her and I went in our brother Steve's room. He was in there. He took one look at me and he goes, get out and slam the door. Oh, my God. What was Brooks? I was, was little. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually seven years older than Brooks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she was small then. Oh, my gosh. Did your mom pass out when she saw you? You know, she stayed calm and yeah, got a towel, wrapped it around my head, had me put my head between my legs and called my dad and said, what do we do? <laughs> and so he told her where to take me, but it all wow. worked out. But oh that my- was that, that was the only time I can remember that he didn't actually <laughs> take care of it. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, I'm going to ask a question to that. So, was your dad a surgeon as well? Yes. 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 He was a DO. He was a physician and a surgeon. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't going to sew you up. (laughs) No, no, no. It was probably traumatic for them as well. (laughs) I imagine it was. Do you remember how old you were, Tracy? Oh, goodness. I, I probably had to be around eight, so that would make Brooks around one at the okay. time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You're the, are yeah. you the baby, Brooks? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. So, you're the youngest of five, right? Uh, there there was uh, four original Sig- Sigler children. There was Steve. He was the oldest. He was 11 years older. Then there was Tracy. She is seven years older than me. And then we had a sister in between us, uh, Shannon Brooks, and she died when she was a baby. She was four years older than me and then me. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Big steps for you from your older siblings. Were you spoiled? (laughs) Yeah, I was. (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah. Mom and dad really spoiled her. (laughs) <laughs> so you're, you're saying your dad was a physician and, and surgeon how did he end up delivering over 3,000 babies and I know that you know Lisa shared an article that uh, Danny Andrews wrote back in 2002 you interviewed, interviewed your dad so I read it and got some of these facts and thank you uh, Mr. Andrews so how did he get into the baby delivering business well, Brooks. <laughs> well, I think that was just part of his general practice, uh, doing that. Yeah. Okay. Do do uh, you guys remember who was baby number one? No. 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 That was no. probably before us. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's. I, I'd rather he was a doctor for fifty-four years. I mean, that's about fifty-five babies a year, average. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and then that, that article, uh, it said in 1956, there was a huge uh, blizzard, a snowstorm. The other doctors couldn't get to the hospital. So your dad delivered seven that night. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, what a man. What a man. Now, now see, I think he quit delivering babies. Um, when was that, Tracy? In the early 60s? Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's probably geez, five hundred or more a, a year. Wow, so, that's a, that's really incredible. I mean, because I know he didn't deliver. We were born in sixty four, sixty five. Mm-hmm. And um, I, he wasn't. I don't think he was delivering babies then. And I was born. Michael, were you born in Plainview? No, you were born. No, I was born in Clinton, Oklahoma. Okay, I was born in Plainview at at the hospital there. But I know um, I just recently found my original birth certificate and he didn't, I wanted to see if he delivered me. He did not. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. He did make, he made house calls Uh and um, I went with him on some of those house calls and uh, yeah, it it was amazing to watch him interact with um, his patients and 
the care that he gave him. And he had a black doctor's bag that mm -hmm. he carried. And um, what happened to that, Brooks? Uh, I think Christopher has it. Okay, good. Yeah. That's a yeah. keepsake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's pretty, were, did y'all ever have moments where you just looked at your dad in awe of what he did? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't know of anything dad couldn't do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let's talk about his early years. Uh, I read that he went to, let me look at my notes, Drum Wright High School in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What kind of student was he? I mean, did he ever talk about what he, you know, what th things or if he was in social clubs or anything? Did he mention anything about high, his high school years? I think, um, you know, he was into the Boy Scouts. I'm not sure about social um, things in high school. I know, you know, he had straight A's in school. He yeah. was really, really smart. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I think his biggest accomplishment as a child teenager was becoming the Eagle Scout. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he did it at age 13, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's pretty remarkable. That's yeah, it is because my son got his, but he wasn't until he was a senior at eighteen. I mean, right. your dad to do it at thirteen—that's pretty remarkable. But uh, yeah. that he did that, uh, you know. So, and then he was—he uh, then he continued like a, as a uh, a master, a club master, didn't he, or a Boy Scout? Yes, he was a oh. Boy Scout leader. Uh huh. So were, had... your brother, were your brothers in his um, Boy Scout troop? Yes. 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 Oh. Yeah. Do you remember the number of the troop? 222. 222, right. And yeah. it was uh, based out of St. Mark's Episcopal Church there on Joliet mm -hmm. Street. Yeah. How long did he do that? Oh. He did that up until mom died, I believe. Well, and, that's uh, a did he, and that was in 69. He, uh, they went to somewhere in New Mexico for a lot, of, a lot of their camping, didn't they? He, they went to New Mexico, they went to Colorado, they went to Arkansas, <laughs> they went to Oklahoma. Uh, there was, uh, he took those boys everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, good. You any stories from those, from those trips? That he may have shared, um, or your brothers uh, may have shared with with yeah about your dad. Um, uh, gosh, well, see, I went with them. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, we did. We went. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, that's uh, do, they, do they not have Girl Scouts back then? Or, yes. Uh -huh. you, were you were you guys in Girl Scouts? Uh, I tried I, it. <laughs> yeah, I was in I was in Girl Scouts for a little while, and uh, but no, we both mom and dad loved to camp, and uh, we had a small camper that on some of those Boy Scout camping trips, uh, we would go with mom and sleep in that little camper, but uh, yeah, you know they would we would basically stay around the camp while the guys would go out hiking and everything like that but we got to eat their food because they had to cook and, so, and we had kp duty i remember that we had to yeah. help wash dishes <laughs> we did yeah we would have made good boy scouts brooks yes well i tell you i i was a brownie and then i tried girl scouts for a year maybe two but it wasn't near as fun as the Boy Scouts. The it Girl was. Scouts didn't go camping. You know, I didn't want to sit there and sew. <laughs> you know, I wanted to get out and go camping, to go inner tubing on the river. <laughs> yeah. We did stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And, did you you have, know, where, where did they go in Colorado? Where'd you guys go there? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Can you remember? 
I can't remember. I mean, Dad had those boys, I would say, going a minimum of twice a year, if not about four times a year. I mean, he'd even take them in the winter. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. What an yeah. experience yeah. for West Texas kids. I'm, I'm right there with you, Brooks. I did brownies when my brother was in Boy Scouts, and that sure looked like a hell of a lot more fun. And I <laughs> would much rather go on the Boy Scout things. So yeah. I quit. I'm like, if I can't do these things, I was not domestic. I wanted to do the tomboy stuff. I did too. Yeah. And I was going to ask y'all before you answered that question, if you had wanted to, if either one of you had wanted to be in the Boy Scouts and you, you answered that question. Yeah. How do, yeah. They, how do they travel to uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Arkansas? Is that they had like a bus or van or they just took separate vehicles? I, Dad got, well, the boys earned the money for a bus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nothing that that troop did, those boys earned every penny of it. And they earned the money for the bus, and it was a, it was like a Greyhound bus, wasn't a school bus. And they went in and recovered, reupholstered the seats, went through the motor and everything. So they had a really, really nice bus. Yeah. That those boys made every penny for it wow. is that how they earned some of their badges mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. yeah yeah so what did y'all learn from any of those camping trips did y'all learn anything like skills or you know to watch for snakes yeah because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where we went a lot you know especially in oklahoma and arkansas i mean they're snakes <laughs> <laughs> and as, as a matter of fact, um, I was remembering one one of Dad's Boy Scouts, and his name was John Sharp, and he had, you know, he had the really thick glasses, and you know, everybody thought he couldn't see. But I went walking with the boys on a hike, and John, I nearly stepped on a rattlesnake, and John mm. saw that snake and got me out of the way. Okay, wow. good. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Goodness. Oh, well, yeah. we did, we did learn, uh, or I did anyway, um, not time, um, Morse code. Oh yeah. Yeah. Learned that. Um, and dad was, uh, uh, ham, uh, ham radio, radio operator. Mm -hmm. had the setup in the house we had a huge antenna um on our and house he, <laughs> and he also had it on the bus too tracy because when the mm -hmm. boy scouts got homesick dad would patch into mr gilbert yes yes that's fred right gilbert and fred gilbert had the home patch the phone line and they he would call the boy's parents and they could yep. talk to their parents yeah Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yep, what that was the easiest thing to, to do, you know, to make sure these kids were okay like that, you know. For I'm sure for some of these boys that was their first time away from home. Mm -hmm. Some of these and, and dad's assistant uh uh scoutmaster was Doyle Teague, which was Sally, dad's nurse, her husband. Mm-hmm. Oh mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. huh. So when they, if you stayed at camp and they went off to hike or whatever, did they leave y'all with a gun in case there was? Well, I'm, I'm sure my mom had a gun stowed mm -hmm. somewhere, knowing my mom. Yeah, mm -hmm. they didn't make that known to us. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 my son, he was able. They were able to go to Canada a couple times. And uh, they saw a black bear and he filmed it. And I'm like, why are you filming it? It should be like away, <laughs> like, <laughs> like run in the opposite direction or walk in the opposite direction. But uh, luckily that the bear didn't charge. So, but yeah, they, uh, they, uh, he, he enjoyed it. And, and I was very proud of him when he got to, to be an Eagle Scout. So yeah, yeah that, was, that was a pretty, pretty good accomplishment. And what's good about them, there's about 20 kids 
that started it and all of them got Eagle Scout. Right. So every one of them. So yeah. Yeah. And our brother Steve, he became an Eagle Scout as well. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about your dad. I think we read it. Your dad was a pilot. Yes. How, yes he was. When when did he do you remember when he got his pilot license? I don't I don't remember when I, I my memory is dad always flew a plane and, and mom flew too. Yeah, she was a pilot as well. Oh wow. And um but yeah, dad he would he would get up early every morning and go fly his it was a two seater. He called it the pedal jumper. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would get up every morning and go fly that little two seater. And sometimes he would take me and Brooks, as you got older, he took you as mm -hmm. well. And uh, yeah, he would he would fly from early in the morning. If I was with him one time, we went, we flew to Lubbock. We had breakfast. We flew back and he took me to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was pretty. Those are great memories. Yeah, Gosh. he, yeah, he he had flown me to up to see my mom's parents in Hominy, Oklahoma, several times. Mm -hmm. uh, he flew me to his brother's house. He lived in Perryton. Uh, he flew me there several times. Uh, he flew me over here to Rio to see the to because Lori Heffelfinger was a really good friend of mine. Is and he'd fly me up here and drop me off to stay with the Heffelfingers. Were you ever scared? Were y'all ever scared like the first time you got on, on no? Mm -mm. No, I, I would get air sick um, if we were going a long distance, like if he was flying me to Oklahoma to grandma and grandpa's. And so I'd have to take Dramamine or something. He would give that to me, but yeah. Never scared. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And how long did he fly? How many years? Long time. Okay. Long time. I think up until, I think it was about his 60s. And uh -huh. you don't remember how old he was when he got his pilot, pilot license? No. It, it had to be before we were born because right. him and mom I get, after he had done his internship, he flew, they flew into Plainview and um, w they were getting fuel and Claude Hutcherson met him out at the plane and asked him where he was from and what he did. And dad said, well, I'm looking for, you know, an area to practice in. And Claude said, you found it. Yeah, yeah I, I read in the article that it was, what building was it? Um, Skaggs building? Yes. Yeah. That he first practiced in the Skaggs building? Yes. I don't remember where that is. Do you, do you remember? It's, it, it, it's right, near, uh, right next door. It's on Broadway. That's right downtown. Next, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, of course, he moved to that house on 10th Street and... I don't remember the cross street. Yeah, Tenth uh, and Independence. Independence. Yeah, that's where I, of course, when I remember when I used well, to go now, see him. Now, see, uh, really, actually, he helped build a hospital in Alton. He practiced in Alton. Okay. Him and Doctor Fight and Carrie's dad, Bill Eaves, uh, was their business manager. So they had that hospital in Elton for a few yep. years. Mm -hmm. And then dad really came and stuck in Plainview. Okay. My yeah. grandmother lived in Elton. Oh, I'm wow. My, okay. Yeah, my, my paternal grandmother lived in Elton. So um, when my, my dad moved from New Mexico, they lived in Elton for a bit. So that's okay. how daddy knew Dr. Siegler. Yeah. Now, see, our, our brother, Steve, he was born in Alton. Mm -hmm. Tracy and I were born in Plainview. Okay. Yes. 
Now, did y'all graduate from Plainview High School? I did, uh, but I graduated early. I went to summer school. <laughs> um, uh, I was should have been in the class of uh, 79, and I actually graduated in 78. Okay. So, so okay. I, I became a senior my junior year, so I graduated that summer. So you graduated the year Michael and I were in eighth grade. Okay. And you were there when Mr. Sherwood started as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. Mosquito. <laughs> Tracy, did, <laughs> yeah. you, did you graduate from Plainview? No, I didn't. I I actually uh, left home when I was 16. I got married and I was a child bride. And, uh, and um, my husband, I married Gary Davis that graduated from Plainview High School and he had joined the Navy. And so we traveled quite a bit <clears throat> with him being in the Navy. And uh, I ended up graduating in Sicily. We oh, wow. were stationed there and I took my GED there. And it was administered uh, by a Catholic priest on the naval base there. That's what he did. So, uh, yeah, but I graduated on time. And I promised Dad when I got married. He said, you've got to promise me you will get your high school diploma. And I promised. And I did. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's where I was when I graduated. Was he uh, happy that you left school early and got married, or was he? Yeah, no, he wasn't opposed. It wasn't a, it wasn't a rebellion type of thing. Um, Mom had passed away um, a couple of years prior. I was fourteen when she passed away of cancer, and. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think my dad was like, if that'll make you happy, I want you to be happy, you know. Oh. And then Steve so, had joined the army. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, and Andrea Hayes is one of our classmates. She did ask, did your dad serve in the military? And if he did, what branch? Yes, he did. He, um it's a funny story, really. Uh, when he was in med school, he got drafted. And they were a bit embarrassed when he showed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he had one leg. Right. And so they were scrambling of what to do now. And uh, he was probably only officially in the military for maybe a week or two, and they gave him an official discharge. Um, so, and it was the army. Okay. So, yeah, it was a very short stint, but it, it's a funny story, really. And I yeah. assume this is World War II that uh, he was drafted for? Mm hmm Yes. And, and See, uh, where was he living when he was drafted? What's in Oklahoma or... That would have been Kansas City. Yeah, he was in medical school. Oh, okay. Yeah. But a lot of people think Dad, you know, got his, he lost his leg in the war. And no, Dad actually lost his leg when he was five years old. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was reading the story about um, how he lost his leg in that article that D Danny Andrews wrote. Mm -hmm. And it just made me think about, you know, how far we've come with medical technology that if that accident were to happen today, there's no way that a child would lose their leg. Mm -hmm. you know, but right. the advancement of medicine is such that, you know, amputation was the answer versus, you know, some other orthopedic solutions um, to that mm -hmm. injury. And, um, but, you know, your dad didn't let it stop him. Mm -mm. No. no. No, nope. and and his leg is buried in uh, Wicks, Arkansas. 
Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Have a headstone. Uh, Dad, uh, he got a little plaque for it. Yeah. Okay. He did, did, he ask, did he ask your grandfather or your grandparents, like, hey, I want to bury my leg? No, back no. then they didn't really do, I don't think, cremations. <laughs> <laughs> And that's that's just what they did is they buried his his leg in the family cemetery. Wow. Yeah. Well, and that same article uh, that uh, we read uh, mentioned a moonshiner heard that this little boy lost his leg and he couldn't get around, so he went and measured your dad, and then he for for three months he whittled. The crutches. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he, he didn't go buy them somewhere, save money and buy them, but he literally got, I forgot what kind of tree it was. Let me, I'm sorry, bear with me. Uh, uh, but it was a certain uh, little uh, uh, hickory. And mm -hmm. he, for three months, he just yeah. whittled away. And does he, did he save those crutches? And if he did, is, does anyone have them? No, not those. No. Oh. Yeah, wouldn't that have been something though to have saved those? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What an artifact to to. Mm -hmm. to yes. Oh my gosh. But somebody did when that happened to Dad. They gave him a goat, a pet goat. A oh. goat. Okay. And her name, Dad named her Fanny, and it's like Tracy had said, it's it was an emotional support goat. Mm -hmm. But it was a special goat. I can't remember what breed it was. It didn't smell. Um, the goat lived in the house with them, slept oh. with dad. And dad had that goat until he went to college and he left it with one of his friends on his farm. And dad did get to go back at some point and see the goat. And the goat still remembered him. But dad had that goat the whole mm -hmm. time growing up. Oh my That's God. cool. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Fanny, huh? Uh, uh huh. Oh, he also tried, I think, uh, ranching. Yes. Where we read that, mm -hmm. I think it was Aunt Danny's uh, article. You had to bend that he, he uh, it was short lived because mm -hmm. the cows was, I guess, were by a tree and lightning struck and killed them. So <laughs> done. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I have a picture of a bull right hanging right here. Let me see if I can get it. That picture of that bull. Yeah. That, that my mom uh -huh. did. And that bull was a pet. Their ranch was uh in Hominy, Oklahoma, Osage County. And uh mom would go out and try and paint this bull, this picture. Well, the bull kept knocking over her easel because he wanted her to pet him. But yeah, when uh they that bull didn't get killed because when they sold the ranch, they made sure he went for breeding purposes. So Oh, okay. Mm hmm Oh yeah, it was an uh, unfortunate situation that uh he lost all these cows at one time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, I'm listening to you share these stories about your dad in my mind. I'm thinking, why hasn't a book been written about all this? <laughs> I mean, you really, you know, these are not ordinary stories. They're pretty extraordinary, especially coming out of West, small town, West Texas, right? Or small town, Oklahoma. I mean, these are pretty remarkable, but they're right in line with the remarkable <laughs> man that your dad was. I'm yeah. Well, hey, uh, it's not. I don't, I don't. We didn't write it down. But I just thought about it. How did your dad meet your mom? Do you know, Brooke? I, you know, I, I think I don't know. I think they met in Harmony somewhere mm -hmm. in Oklahoma. Okay. I guess uh, they were college, or I guess. You don't remember, or they they never told you guys. I don't remember. I don't recall them really ever telling us how they met. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. What? Well, okay. Yeah. Um. Well, let's talk about masters of swing. I was thinking about this. So your dad was in band with some other doctors, 
mm -hmm. local businessman in Plainview. And I'm thinking, you know, it's a small town. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was coincidence that other doctors played an instrument. I mean, I live in Houston, near Houston. There's thousands of doctors. So you're bound to find several, several doctors that, that, can, that probably can sing and play an instrument. But you're in Plainview, Texas, where it's small. I mean, mm -hmm. would have thought all the other doctors knew how to play a guitar or piano or but anyway. But uh, mm -hmm. could you share some stories about the days he was, uh, uh, you know, during his Masters of Swing? That's you, Tracy. Okay, well, I remember those days very well. I I was actually a part of the old masters of swing, and um, I was the vocalist. And um, we had rehearsals every Wednesday night, and um, it was so much fun. I mean, the house was full of music, and good music. I mean, these guys could play and oh. they, they were in demand. Um, oh, did they, did they play other music, other, uh, other music or did they have their own, their, their own? Well, they, they played other people's music. Um, and it was, you know, uh, music like, um, Oh, I'm I'm trying to think like Bye Bye Blackbird, um, you know that kind of music. Mac the Knife, um, jazzy. Then they played smooth music. They, um, yeah, it was. They were they were all remarkable musicians. Mm -hmm. Where did you guys usually play? Where did y'all play mostly? Well, like we played. We played a lot of different venues. We played in um, high school. Uh, we played at a prom, I remember. Um, and um, I sang at that prom. I, I was trying to think, Brooks, that might have been Steve's prom. Okay. And um, I sang there. And then the country club, if they would ever have any special events. And then they were invited out, um, out of town to mm -hmm. play in Lubbock and all the surrounding communities. Uh, mm -hmm. In Amarillo, there was a convention going on and for Ronald Reagan. Um, oh, cool. And uh, we went there and, and played. And um, yeah, that was pretty cool because afterwards Ronald Reagan walked up on the stage and gave me a kiss on the cheek. So, <laughs> how old were you? Hold on, no, I bear with me. I gotta close my garage. I, I, I do this in the garage, so I'll be right back. Sorry. How old were you, Tracy, when that happened? Hmm? How, how old were you? Oh, goodness. Okay. I was 13, probably. Oh, my, my goodness, were you nervous performing? Oh, no, no. I sang all the time. Yeah. So was your entire family musical? Pretty much. Yeah, sure. mom Mom was musical. She could play the piano, oh my gosh, and uh, the organ, and dad, the <laughs> guitar. Um, he tried the banjo for a while, um, but he didn't keep at it. He could have done it really well if he had it. And then the Hawaiian guitar, he played that. Um, I took seven years of uh, music lessons with Sarah Thomas back in the day. And uh, we took piano lessons and mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my goodness. It was fun. So I, I have a, a specific question about your dad. Can you share, this is to both of you, and whoever wants to go first, can you share like a favorite memory of him that stands out for you? Oh, Brooks. Well, I, you know, going flying with him every morning before school was really uh cool. Um, and then, um, 
dad, you know, was a hunter. He liked to hunt. I mean, he hunt, hunt birds, deer. Uh, he, I, he never killed a bear or anything like that, but he would go deer hunting and bird hunting. And it was always fun whenever I'd go with him on both. And especially with the birds, since he w was handicapped, which that word never came out of dad's mouth ever. He ever. never even, he never had a handicap sticker, tags, nothing. He, no, but he was allowed by law. He could shoot out of his window of the car. And so I was the bird dog. So I would get to go and get the birds. Yeah. <laughs> But I'd help him, you know, I'd help stand there and help him when he cleaned deer and stuff like that. You were, you were the bird hunt? feather plucker as well. Did you have to clean the birds, pluck the feathers? and mm -hmm. all that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where would he go hunt? Where would you guys go hunt? Um, he, he hunted a lot at the Hutcherson's Ranch in Lano. Mm -hmm. Um he hunted in Colorado too. I'm not sure where he hunted there. Um, he had hunted, uh, I know at one time at the Hutcherson's ranch and here in New Mexico, I've got a couple of his animal heads here and of course, bird hunting, uh, dove hunting. He'd go and do that over in Olton in the sand hills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He would he went fishing in Canada, out mm -hmm. east. He would do that um, in his latter years before he mm -hmm. had the aneurysm, and um, yeah, he did that for several years. Loved it. Oh well, we had a a houseboat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had a houseboat. Now, y'all, now this it's kind of like a. a I would say it was a small travel trailer on pontoons. Exactly. <laughs> it was nothing fancy. Nope. And we had that over by Tucumcari here in New Mexico at Lake Conscious. And I mean, every waking minute we would be over, you know, mm -hmm. going to the houseboat and fishing, uh, fishing with the Heffel Fingers, the Haynes, Walter Haynes's family. Uh, uh, the Heffel fingers. Uh, they uh -huh. were. I mean, there was quite a few families that would go. <clears throat> wow, what fun times! And and what an incredible opportunity to have that bonding time with your dad to go hunting. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you know, that's and that's that's okay. one thing. I mean, you know, he always said, you know hunting is to provide food for the family he said if you kill it you eat it he said you don't kill just to be killing right he said yeah. you what, don't do that do you remember what rifles he had no oh, i don't i know he's had a 30 30 yeah. our mom hunted too she had a 30 30 um he had several rifles i couldn't tell you the caliber yeah Tracy, what what about, about, go ahead. Sorry. Tracy, go ahead. How about you? Oh, okay. Well, uh, some of my favorite memories, of course, uh, was one of them was the old masters of swing. And um, another favorite memory that I really enjoyed, uh, I worked for him in the summer at his yeah. office. And I loved doing that and uh, just assisting him with patience and, and watching him um, during that time. There, there were many, many times that um, a patient would be in an examining room. He would come out. He would come to the desk where I was and he'd say, no charge. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. I worked for him too. Yeah. That, yeah, that happened a lot. A lot. A lot. Good for him. I mean, can I ask why? Is it because, I mean, 
he he was just that kind of a giving okay. man and he knew that there were people that couldn't afford it yeah exactly uh-huh yeah. he knew that they did not have the money yeah yeah wow <laughs> you know that um going back to that post that i did 10 years ago I, I said several times they need to name a street after your dad there i mean yeah. they do uh, if anyone deserves it more it's him i mean yeah. geez uh i wish they would i would you know mr andrews if you can help <laughs> if uh, anyone from the city of houston will, will, if you guys are gonna watch this video or this podcast please let's find a street and name it after mr sigler dr sigler that would be Oh, it needs to be so anyway well i mean he, he's a he's a legend in plain view and I, I think his legacy needs to be honored in a way that's commemorative and that other generations can know who this remarkable human being was and uh, you know how many lives he touched and how many people that he helped and it sounds uh that he did what he did out of love and just had a, an incredible high level of altruism and you know his people skills i mean mm -hmm. his ability to connect with people of all mm -hmm. walks of life of every profession and of every color and to connect with them in the way that he did is i think makes him made him such a remarkable human being yeah and, and mm -hmm. interesting i have a I, I think the fact that he was so inclusive of his family and his children you know is a really neat thing because I've had other friends or whatever that their dads are doctors and it wasn't that way. It's like their professional life was so separate from their home life. And it sounds like your dad like integrated every aspect of his interests, his professional life, his family life was so fully integrated. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it was. <clears throat> yeah. What about your friends? Uh, you know, the high, the, they say you got a cool dad, or I mean, do we, uh, can you share any stories and your friends may have said anything to your dad, or male or female? Oh, they always liked dad, but I think a lot of them were intimidated by my dad. <laughs> my friends, yeah. anyway. Were those, yeah. Were those the boys are intimidated, I guess? <laughs> uh, I, just, I just think. Uh, it, well for one thing i mean dad always went to bed early early so if i did have friends over and stuff he was already you know he'd get up at four or five o'clock in the morning yes he would yeah he yeah. would i do know that um steve's friends um dad um counseled them i don't know if that'd be the right word meant to help mentor some of them um, if they were having problems um, they did open up and would talk to dad they were comfortable and um, he spent a fair amount of time uh, doing things like that I know especially with my brother's friends mm -hmm. now were you all oh. close to siblings growing up yes Yes, yes, we were. Mm -hmm. In fact, Brooks and I, although we live in two different countries, um, we talk every day, sometimes yeah. twice a day. Well, mm -hmm. we get on Skype and um, yeah, we're we're best friends. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's her. <laughs> That's a blessing of the technology we have today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I want to go back to the master of the swings. Uh, I apologize. I had my garage open and they're mow they're mowing outside. So I didn't hear you said you had a kiss from someone uh, who, who on the cheek who who kissed you on the cheek. Ronald Reagan. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> she so, also sang with Jimmy Dean. Nice. Yeah. 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 I did. Yeah. Were there any other uh, famous musicians that you guys came across when you guys were playing besides Jimmy Dean? Um, no, not that, not that I recall. Uh, I remember Jimmy Dean was coming into Plainview. They were 
having a big banquet and wanting to honor him. And of course, the old masters to swing were invited to provide the music. And uh, he came up and we sang Bye Bye Blackbird together. Oh, and nice. it was it was so much fun. He was it was great. Great. Is there, great. Is there any Super 8 film on these? No, I don't. I don't think so. Uh -uh. No. Mm -mm. Oh, man. Wouldn't that oh, wow. been, Yeah. That would be awesome. So we're, that, we're, would, yeah, that would be cool. Um, were Did you in touch with Dean or uh, was he gracious? Oh my goodness, yes. He was he was very gracious. He he loved it. He thought they were awesome and, and they were they were really good. So well, well tell them who really who good. all was in the band that we need to acknowledge who was in the band in the well, masters we, of swing. We, we had Archie Keys, he was on the drums, and um we had Clovis Clow. Dr. Clow. Dr. Clow. We had Dr. Baldwin mm -hmm. on the bass. And we had Wilmot Eaton. He wasn't a doctor. He owned the stationery store, Eaton's mm -hmm. stationery. Mm -hmm. And um, and then there was an, another vocalist that would come, Riley uh, Armstrong. And um, he would come and we he would sing and we would sing together. Um, who, am I missing? Oh, Dalton Wood. Woods. Mm -hmm. Woods. He was he, on the sex. Sex. Yeah. Yeah. Sex. Yeah. Did you did they record anything? I mean, is there is there any? No. Um, I don't think. Yeah, was, I think they did record on reel to reel. Um. Okay. There may have been a few cassettes, but through the years. Uh -huh. I don't remember that. So yeah, I, I think well that was after you left that they had done that. Okay. Do yeah. you guys know how they started? How oh, like whose idea? I mean, were they sitting at a coffee shop? And I mean, do y'all know how that band got together? I don't. I I think it was just kind of it just kind of happened. Okay. And as yeah, they all got to talking with each other and discovered they each played something and yeah, it was kind of like, hey, let's get together and have some fun. <laughs> That's cool. And they did. They yeah. did had a blast. I mean, they yeah. practiced once a week. That's I mean <laughs> I mean, there were most most of them were doctors and I mean I don't know how many hours it put in, but then all of a sudden on Wednesday, you said Wednesday nights, you know. We got to go practice our band. So, yeah. and did you mention they practice it at your house or did they yeah. practice? Okay. Yeah, at our house. Yeah. Where did y'all live? I mean, what about the neighbors? Oh, they they never complained. I'm sure they enjoyed the music. That's yeah. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, mom would make um, hors d'oeuvres or some kind of snack afterwards, but they would start, I think, around. Six, six thirty, seven yeah. was it? Seven. And, and sometimes they would go till eleven. On a school no. night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But normally they they stopped rule of thumb, they stopped around nine, ten o'clock. Uh, but there were times they'd go on till eleven. Wow, yeah. man, I would love to hear those guys play. I know. Yeah. That would be I mean, great. I would love to go on YouTube and find them. <laughs> yeah. Especially one with uh, Jimmy. Well, you, well, I guess they were never televised either then, like a local, like in Lubbock, a local, one of the local stations. Yeah. Uh, and that. I think they made, the, y'all made the news. They made the news from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to research and see if there's any. <laughs> coverage of them you know if they're on the news they may have played a clip of them performing or something mm -hmm. so tracy did your did your dad ask you to sing or do you like dad can i sing for you guys i mean how, how'd that come about i 
I grew up singing. I just sang all the time. Even as a little kid, I would sing and dance around the house. And I was the real extrovert, I guess, on that. And uh, yeah, it just kind of happened. Now, I'm sure at one point he asked me if I wanted to sing a song when they were over. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, was, I wasn't shy. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, would get up and sing and enjoyed it, loved it. That's cool. And again, how many years did that last? Oh, goodness. Well, I, I left home, like I said, when I was 16, and they were okay. still going. So I okay. sang with them all the way up to that time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then when I returned back from um, Europe, and um, there was a space and time, and I sang with them one more time at the country club so yeah that was in the 80s a reunion huh mm -hmm. yeah so tracy did you continue singing like you know i didn't i i didn't i wish i had a and... she was really good she was really good she's got a beautiful voice you should ask Jimmy Dean to be uh, to be one of his backup singers. <laughs> well, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean actually wanted to help even get me on a record, and wow. uh, Mom and Dad said no. I was they weren't going to do that. I was too young. We weren't going to go okay. down that path yet. So, but <laughs> yeah, but no, I I didn't. But I've got a daughter-in-law that. She can sing and she yeah. comes from a musical family. She's working on her doctorates right now in music therapy. And she actually has uh, our dad's guitar. That he made, that he made, that when he, he made. made. Yeah. yeah, I mentioned to ask you guys that, yeah, he made, he made yeah. his own guitar. And he yes. played a Fender before that, correct? Yes, he, he yes. played, yeah. The, he Who has, has those guitars? Do you know you guys are they still around? No, that, uh, just that one. Cool. Yeah, Amen. and yeah, and Tracy's son's wife has it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful that it's still being played and it's in the family and uh, that's, yeah, that's very nice. Oh my! Yeah, he bought it. He bought it from like a pawn shop, didn't he, right? Just in the, like a box or something? And then yeah, was... it was all broken up. Yeah, and he <laughs> completely redid it, yeah. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from Eddie, Eddie Morton. What, what about ladies? What about any uh, funny stories about your dad? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Did he ask him to do that? Oh yeah. He did. He was he was always teasing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I don't know. I can't. Yeah, he really wasn't a jokester or anything like that. Yeah. Was your dad affectionate? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. He um he always called me baby girl to up to the time he died mm -hmm. and um yeah we never ever got off the phone without saying i love you mm -hmm. and um he was affectionate he mm -hmm. hugged us and cared for us yeah yeah that's wonderful because he comes from a generation where that was not the norm yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, after, after your mom died, he, he probably also felt like he really needed to, to step up, you know, in terms of playing. Well, dad. yeah. And after our mom died, see, our brother was killed in Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. That was, you know, really hard on him, too. 
I yeah. can only imagine that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, besides the musicians, who else did you, what, who, I mean, who else did your dad used to hang out with back, you know, what, what were these other friends? I mean, did he have, have other men that he would hang out with, and, you know, go to dinners with or anything like that? Well, there was gentleman Lorraine Sands that was back. Well, I guess that, um, uh, of course, him and Eddie Morton were friends. Um, and of course, Sally's husband, Doyle, before he passed away, they, you know, Sally and Doyle were friends. Who else, Tracy? Well, you know, and of course, the ones we always went fishing with. Yeah, the Hutchersons, and that yeah. was our that was our close knit the, group. The Hangses, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, going back to flying to Lubbock to eat breakfast, it, was there a reason why he did that? I mean, I mean, because <laughs> he, he wanted to. Okay. We yeah. tried. <laughs> and because we could, I guess. <laughs> you know. Um, just oh, just pretty cool. I mean, what time would you guys fly out? I mean, school started, I would assume seven or eight, right? It was I think yeah. it was eight thirty back then. Yeah, eight thirty. It early. If you wanted to go flying with dad, you were up at five. Yep. Yeah, and it would it would be cool. I remember the cool mornings mm -hmm. and him getting that little pedal jumper warmed up and mm -hmm. crawling in there. Yeah. So where would did you, you where would you eat in Lubbock? Do you I was gonna say, did you guys go to the same restaurant? It's no, nope, they had a little cafe in the in the airport there. So well, you know, wasn't anything fancy. We'd just go in there, get bacon and eggs and He'd get a coffee and we'd fly back. Did you guys ever <laughs> skip school on one of those trips? No. Mm. No. Mm -mm. Well, I mean, Ed, where did you, uh, did, did your, did he like to cook a lot at home? Or did you guys go out quite a bit to eat there in Love and Plain View? We, I, my, our mom was a fabulous, she was a gourmet cook. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, she had how many cookbooks did mom have? Over a hundred. Yeah. Oh. And what she was your favorite every, dish? What was um, your favorite she, dish? Ooh. Oh gosh. Um I like the beef stroganoff. Yeah, the beef stroganoff. Um anything. Mm -hmm. Her fried chicken. She could cook anything. She broke. She actually wrote an article for the newspaper. And I've got the picture of me sitting on the counter up in the kitchen and um, her preparing a meal. And it was in the newspaper. But yeah, she was a gourmet cook. Yeah. Well. Wow. As you share these stories and you reflect back, do you feel like you lived a charmed life? Yeah. I feel like we lived a very blessed life. Yeah. We, we did. We were we were fortunate. We mm -hmm. um yeah, we were a, a wonderful family unit. Yeah. Yeah. So when you guys were like out, out and about with your dad. Um, when you were young, did a lot of people come up to him and, and thank him? And, you know, I mean, can you share any of those stories you remember that uh, one particular time that someone said, thank you for delivering my baby or saving my child's life or et cetera? I mean, that was all the time. I mean, oh. even, yeah. I mean, I, I could even up to the time I moved, I could go to the grocery store and people would go, Oh, I loved your daddy. You know, they, yeah. and I'm, and it's terrible to say, but I couldn't remember everybody, but they, <laughs> everybody know, knew who I was because of dad. Yeah. 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 Well, he was like a celebrity. Mm -hmm. like, well, in West, not just Plainview, but I mean, 
that part of West Texas, Olton and, you know, mm-hmm. Edmondson, because all those people came into Plainview. Yeah. yeah. And he, he always took time to talk with people. If they mm-hmm. came up to him, if we were in a restaurant, we didn't, we didn't eat out a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but whenever we would go out, and or if it was to run an errand or I went with him or um, he was never, never made people feel like he was in a hurry. Mm-hmm. And he would always stop and talk and yes. yeah, engage with them. Yes. What, what, is, what is one thing that you admire the most about your dad? I think, well, go ahead, sis. I, there's, I mean, I admired everything about my dad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, can you, I mean, why? <laughs> why? Uh, he was just amazing. I mean, I, he took me bowling one time when I was a kid, you know, and I'm thinking, how's dad going to bowl? Dad could bowl. Yeah, he could bowl. There, there wasn't anything I could, I, I could see. There was nothing that Dad couldn't do. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. That's why he didn't consider himself handicapped. Absolutely. Not at all. No. You know, I think that's a real incredible legacy. Um, to have a physical disability and not let it hinder your abilities and your um your desires to do a whole bunch of things you know and i i mean that just makes it it gives me goosebumps you know the fact that he didn't allow that to be a limitation yeah yeah well if you think about it he lost his leg when he was five so i mean you know i guess the memory of having that leg really faded away mm-hmm. and that it, it, life was normal for him without the leg true yeah so true yeah it's true Did he ever I, talk about, i'm sorry go ahead tracy you know i i as i think you know what did we admire what did i admire about him you know, as a kid, you a lot of times you just take things for granted because to us that that's dad. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. my friends, you know, would point out he's only got one leg, and it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess he does. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. we we just didn't he we didn't live like a family with a handicapped father, which uh-uh. he was. And uh, as an adult. Um, I, I can appreciate and admire his courage, Mm -hmm. the courage it took for him and his tenacity and, but all along his humility Mm -hmm. that he carried, he, he was a very humble man Mm -hmm. in being a doctor wasn't a status to him. Mm-mm. He he cared for people. Yeah. And I admire his compassion. And if I could just get a smidgen of that, you know, going mm-hmm. in my life the way he, he lived it before us. Right. Um, you yeah. just, you think about those things after you're grown up. Mm-hmm. And what would I say to him today, you know, if I could see him? Oh, my gosh. You know, I'd be gushing all over him. <laughs> it would be on this podcast with y'all. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, talking about his life. But, you know, your dad, for him, being a doctor was a vocation and a calling. Uh-huh. It, yes. was, it was a purpose for him versus a way of making money or, like you said, establishing a status. It was a real calling and a sense of purpose for him. Yes. You know, we don't, a lot of people don't look at that as a vocation anymore. And for him, it was. And to me, when I think of vocation, it's something that comes from here. 
Mm -hmm. right? Her mm -hmm. is here. Yeah. And uh, I think he was just a really rare human being. And how lucky you girls were that he was your dad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, well, definitely. I there's probably mostly not a day that goes by that Brooks and I don't reminisce or mm -hmm. mention dad and you know. So yeah. we we definitely miss him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, let me ask you this: Do you, I well grandkids or maybe great grandkids? Do they know you guys? share his legacy with with them i mean they know about about grand, you know granddad or great granddad yeah they called him the kids called the grandkids called him dad dad <laughs> yeah. and that came from my firstborn uh -huh. um garrett he for whatever reason he didn't say granddad he just called him dad dad he was the first grandbaby and it just stuck with all of them. Um, yeah. But yes, I share uh, mm -hmm. the legacy of uh, their granddad and what a remarkable mm -hmm. man he was. Yeah. And my kids, of course, we lived in Plainview, you know, so my kids got, my kids were around him more than Tracy's were because mm -hmm. they were in Canada. So. Yeah, my kids definitely knew what yeah. dad. Well, good. Uh, did he I, ever share why he wanted to be a doctor, or did did you did, did or your mom tell you why he chose the medical field? I, he wanted to help people. Help people. Yeah, yeah. that's. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't in it maybe because he, he wasn't in it for the money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, obviously no. Uh -uh. no. No, he wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's a question about both your parents. Um, who was the disciplinarian in your house? That's a good question. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I think got mom chased, was, yeah, what do you chased have? chased around with fly swatter. Yep. <laughs> oh, swatter too. So did your mom ever say, wait till your father comes home? Did she ever say that? No. 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 She I took she care is, of it. She just got no. the flash water out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can recall maybe being spanked by my dad one time. And yeah. it, it was nothing. And he said, just act like this hurts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I made a lot of no I made a lot of noise and he walked out. <laughs> no, it yeah. wasn't a spanking really. I, I can remember one time Tracy and I were arguing and my mom our mom got so mad about it. she took us into the bathroom and got some of that ivory soap and put it on a wash rag and she washed our mouths out with it. I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys were cursing, huh? No, we weren't cursing. We were just arguing. Arguing, arguing. Uh -huh. I thought it. I thought it was funny. Brooks. Was yeah, funny. she was laughing the whole time, and of course, I'm a lot younger, and I'm crying. <laughs> Quit arguing. Yeah, we did for a little bit. Yeah. Where, where did you guys grow up? And what uh, do you mind me ask? What uh, what area of Plainview did you guys grow up? On Zephyr Street. On Zephyr. 1107 Zephyr. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, I guess, did you, Trace, did you live through, I mean, did you two graduate? I mean, Brooks, did you two graduated? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, cool. well, yeah, we did. We just sold the house, uh, what, a year and a half ago? Yeah, yeah. a year and a half. It'll be two years um, this September. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mom and dad built that house. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So after your dad passed away, was anyone living in the house or were you renting it out or? We lived there. Yeah. No, I'm saying at, you, you said you just sold the house to, uh, a little over a year ago. Was some, yeah. Was the family mm -hmm. member still living there? 
yes, dad, dad had remarried. And so uh, his wife was living there. And then she, um, at the time when we sold the house, she had moved to um, a care home. Yeah, Westridge okay. Manor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Oh my gosh, was that bittersweet seeing that house sold and it's no longer uh, a home? Yeah. It was tough. Yeah, Brooks, Brooks was there because she helped having to go through things and yeah I wasn't able to be there for that but yeah it was tough when's the last time you've been to Plainview Tracy oh goodness that long huh yeah yeah well, it's, it's changed even from Lisa and I you know we graduated in 83 I mean, the last 40 years, it's definitely changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was there, probably the last time I was there was when Robert died. Was yeah. that the, yeah, how long ago was that? That's been a while. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, let's hope they get that street named after him so you can go back <laughs> and be there for the ceremony. I, we would come. Yeah, we you would hear come that, for that. Plain view. Yeah, we, we would come for that. Find one. Yeah, we need to. We need to start a campaign. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, uh, we, could, we could rename the street where he practiced their tent and independence. So it's called that little show run independence. You know, Doctor Sigler Boulevard, or you know. <laughs> well, that would that would be an. Amazing honor in yeah, his it would. Yeah. Well, cool. Okay, Michael, looks like we have our jobs cut out for us. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll just go ahead. We'll ask Danny Andrews. We'll ask Phyllis Wall to help us. Uh, so hello, Danny. Hello, Phyllis. Hello. <laughs> they're uh, they're following us on, on our uh, page, so they're definitely gonna see this video or uh, the show. But uh, yeah, we we need we need something for your dad there. They uh, they have a walk of uh, fame now, and uh, you know like uh, like Grauman's Chinese Theater and, the, and well, come on, we need a, we need a star, a road, a building, everything. When he needs his his name needs to be somewhere. In Thanks, Grace. Michael. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, he was my doctor, and I enjoyed him. And and again, going back to that post. I mean, every comment was something nice about your dad. There was a lady who said that they were living in Houston and their, their kid had something. And I don't remember what it was, but the doctors couldn't figure it out. So he she went to Plainview and saw your dad. And he goes, oh, it's this. And gave her treatment. And two, three days later, gone. Yeah. I mean, gone. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Something like, kind of like that movie, <laughs> Doc Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I got to say, Michael, I know your dad I, and I know your mom oh, too, you? but, I, but I know your dad better than I, I met your mom a couple of times, but you have the nicest dad. Marshall is well, thank a you. really nice man. Thank you. Thank you. They're still there in Plainview, so they That's both awesome. are. And uh, uh, they celebrated last year their 60th anniversary. Oh, oh wow. wow! Congratulations! Yeah. Thank right. you. And my mom will turn eighty this August, and then my dad will be eighty in May of next year. So we're planning yeah. to uh, do do uh, have dinner with. But I definitely I talk to my mom, you know, twice a week in the mornings when I'm driving to work. So you know, my dad took all in the afternoon. So I'll, I'll definitely mention that you say hello and thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Do you remember where he worked uh, in his young in his young years? Your, da your dad, yeah, at uh, Edmondson's gas station. Yeah, Jay exactly. Ed Jay Edmondson. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yep. That that is correct. It worked right for many next, years. Yeah, and that, and that was right next to where James Wallace Davenport had his insurance company. Right. Yep. Oh yeah, he was there for many years. Well, thank you, thank you yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Well, Lisa, do you have any other other questions? Um, no, you... but I, I was going to make a comment to Tracy when you were saying that you went from Plainview to Sicily. 
I was thinking in my head, I thought you left a small town girl and came <laughs> back a worldly woman. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I mean, you know, what a, what a uh, you know, not just culture shock, but a, a shock of, of experience, right? Yeah. It, yeah, it like, was an amazing experience. I lived there two years. So, um, yeah, it's good. Did you travel elsewhere? Yes, I've, I've done a fair amount of traveling. And, um, yeah, I did. So, what an exciting time for a playing yeah. girl, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So uh, let me ask this. I, I assume you guys, you two never got your pilot's, li pilot's license? No, no, I didn't. Dad wanted me to, and Dad also wanted me to get my ham radio license, too. Yeah, but I didn't. It's not too late. It's not too yeah. late. <laughs> no, I really don't want to fly. Not, I don't, you know, uh, that ground is... <laughs> way down there and if something happened to that plane no i'd rather i guess trust somebody else <laughs> <laughs> so the plane, you know the plane dad had that he flew the coop uh if the motor was to go out that plane would actually glide right yeah you could just coast it down and land yes yeah mm -hmm. you could oh, and, middle of the anywhere it's a very yes. safe plane Mm-hmm. For sure. Oh, yeah. I want to ask one. I just saw a question here. Your dad used to refurnish furniture mm -hmm. or refinish mm -hmm. furniture as was as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did he sell any? I mean, did, did he get paid for his services? Or I mean, mm -hmm. is it furniture around the house? Or did friends or relatives used to bring furniture to him? And it was it was basically just stuff that they had that he'd redo yeah mm -hmm. yeah like the kitchen table okay yeah 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 do you all have any of those pieces yes i do i've got a table right there oh cool that's wonderful yeah, yeah i don't have any of that <laughs> yeah and i've they... got like i said i've got the deer head and the it's yeah. not an antelope <laughs> but and then my daughter has the elk head the elk head right. is huge yeah wow cool well anything any, any other questions miss or any other stories you guys want to share no i not me how about you sis i think i'm good yeah we've covered was, we've covered a lot of ground yeah we a lot of ground well we yeah. cannot thank you enough this has been a really heartwarming uh experience and podcast for us and i we're so grateful that y'all agreed to do this and to you know come on tonight and take time away from your lives to share about the legacy of your dad and your lives with him and i know that everybody that watches this podcast is going to really be touched by it well thank you for having us it was a real honor and yeah uh, yeah thanks so much for asking yeah or we're, we're hoping that this will get a lot of shares so but uh thank you ladies thank you thank you and yeah and your dad was a re remarkable man and and uh man i i hope if we get that street name that a lot of people like myself and lisa will be there right we'll be there we'll do a come and for the Absolutely. ceremony i mean it's just it's it's too long that, that someone needs to do something so well, later. Well, We'll be there, Brooks. Yeah, right? we'll get there. Yeah. Yes, we definitely will. See if yeah, if you knew how to fly and had your plane, you'd definitely get there quickly. And see. <laughs> I'll trust. I'll trust a total stranger to fly me. There, <laughs> there you go. Goodness. <laughs> a wonderful evening, and thank you again. And um, you know, this will be posted on our uh, on our page, our Goat Knuckle Talk. Uh, page and we're looking forward to hearing other people's stories and comments after they uh, watch this <laughs> well thank and, you for having us yes, yes. and uh tracy it's uh i have a youtube channel you can also google uh on youtube go knuckle talk with flow 
and you, and all the episodes are on, on YouTube too. So, cause I know, I don't think you're on Facebook, correct? You're not on Facebook. No, yeah, no it's I'm on, not. I, I first post, I first published it on YouTube and then I share the link on our Facebook page. So, uh, okay. I will Thanks. send, I will send, uh, Brooks the link to the YouTube channel so she can forward it to you. I'm, well, I'm, subscri it I'm subscribed. I'm subscribed yeah. to your channel. There you go. Thank you. Well, send it, Brooks. I will. <laughs> All right. Well, good night, ladies. Thank you. Good night. Nice to meet you. Good night. God bless. Take care. Thank you. Thank good night. you. Good night. Well, Lisa, what'd you think? Oh, my goodness. So heartwarming and so touching. And I mean, really, Dr. Siegler was a rare bird. Uh, yeah, you are. They don't make them like that anymore, as they say. So, you know, that article that Danny wrote about those 3,000 babies, a lot of them were immigrants. And and he did think the article said that he that a lot of them left without getting their birth certificates. Yeah. I mean, he was, yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, he, he's someone that his name should, you know, people should remember his name for the forever, what he's done for Plainview uh, and yeah. Alton, you know, and the surroundings as well. I mean, he, that's, it's, it's, it's times we, uh, something needs to be done. So, yeah, I mean, his legacy needs to be remembered. And I'm so glad that, um, you decided to to do this episode um honoring that legacy um i'm just i'm blown away i'm just so impressed by the human that he that he was yeah and absolutely. How much it be that he was our doctor <laughs> yes he was he was and and we, I, we, I probably met brooke and tracy and didn't realize who they were <laughs> you know when we were, right. when we were kids so yeah for sure i know so um just to if you watch this episode, everyone out there, and you have a story about Dr. Siegler, please just post it on our on our page. Yes, once yeah, once we publish this uh, uh, the show, yeah, share your story uh, uh, on 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 that uh, on that uh, post. So we would love to hear it. I mean, uh, I'm telling the the one in, that I posted ten years ago. Uh, there's some great stories I was reading uh, this morning, and let's there's there's bound to be thousands of more great stories about this man so let's hear it i agree with you lisa yeah absolutely because that would be really good for not just his daughters but for his grandchildren to be able to hear and read these stories about their granddad and so i think that would be really really nice if you have a story about dr siegler please post it on our page and uh, that way his family can can read those stories and and we keep his legacy alive yeah, and then I know the other page, some people said, hey, he delivered me. So, hey, let's hear, you know, if he delivered you, <laughs> post it on there. Yeah, so, for sure. For sure. Well, our next show will be in a couple of weeks. It's called 31. It's about another legacy, I guess you could say, about the Pirates, the 76 Pirates that started a 31-game winning streak, and they won three city championships. And I'm going to have uh, Andrew Dunlap, Todd Heflin, Raymond Rivera, uh, John jo and John Joe Perez. So uh, stay tuned for that one. And uh, that's going to be Luthes like Luthes oh, Luthes Thompson. Luthes Thompson. Thank you for reminding me, Luthes Thompson. So uh, some of you might not like like the show, like you Braves team, uh, Mr. Vera, <laughs> Peter Vera, and Jerry Vera. But uh, hey, you know, it's going to be a good show. So. Thank you, Lisa. I'm sorry. It's going to be a fun show. Yes, it is. So, well, thank you and uh, good night, everyone. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Okay. Good night.